Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Paul Donahue, and I will be your host. We ask that you please keep your device muted during the session. And if you have questions, please direct them to me via the chat function. We'll do our best to answer questions at the end and to follow up with any unanswered questions via email. As I think you know, these tech talks have been designed to provide straightforward insights into radio frequency components, the related technology, and the extra design and engineering value that is added by a custom manufacturer such as Quantic TRM. To begin today's session, I am once again pleased to introduce Quantic TRM's Chief Technology Officer, Sean Moore, the author of two U.S. patents and a number of white papers and technical articles on passive microwave technologies, Sean has been with Quantic TRM since the late 90s, and his passion for the job and for solving problems has only increased over the years, especially when it comes to resolving our customers' design and engineering challenges. So welcome, Sean. Can you share an overview of today's topic and your objectives for the session? Yes, thank you, Paul. I'd like to talk about our applications for missile systems. So uh, missile systems are a platform uh, that there, there's actually quite a bit of, uh, of RF componentry uh, on the missile itself, uh, as well as other ground-based uh, sort of support equipment. Uh, the, uh, the, the missile that, that is, is no longer just a, uh, a, a rocket that, that goes where it wants to go, it's actually controlled. Uh, and as a result, uh, you know, it, it needs uh, data links uh, as well as other other information gathering uh, uh, me mechanisms to be able to have it uh, be, have a successful mission. So the things I like to talk about today really are uh, the the big buzzword today is hypersonic missiles, uh, and really what is the difference between a ballistic missile and a hypersonic missile? I like to talk a, a lot about uh, really where uh, TRM's components are used uh, on uh, on missile systems, uh, and then uh, go through some TRM differentiators and then I'll wrap it up as a summary. Well, that sounds good, Sean, and I'm very curious uh, to hear the differences between uh, hypersonic and ballistic trajectory. So maybe that's where we should start. I think it's a great place to start. So uh, this uh, graphic here really shows uh, the, the missile trajectory of a ballistic missile um, versus a hypersonic missile. And the green line is the traditional uh, uh, bl ballistic missile. Uh, it goes a very, very high, very, very, almost like a rainbow, sort of an arc across the sky. Uh, and as a result, it gets quite high in altitude uh, before it turns itself around and, and comes back down to the ground. Whereas a hypersonic missile uh, stays much lower in the atmosphere. It doesn't take that, that parabolic uh, rainbow sort of shape. And, and pretty much it, it hugs the, uh, the curvature of the earth until it gets very close to its target and then dives down. Uh, the big difference really from a strategic standpoint between a ballistic missile and a, and a hypersonic missile is where can a ground radar detect the incoming missile? Uh, as you see on the graphic, uh, the, uh, the ballistic missile gets uh, intercepted far before uh, the, the, hyp the hypersonic missile because it is much higher in the atmosphere. Therefore, a ground radar can see it much sooner. Uh, so there's more time to react uh, to a ballistic missile than there is a hypersonic missile. So really, that is the 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 big um, the big to do about hypersonic missiles is that they can be launched, uh, remain essentially undetected uh, until they are uh, uh, ready to uh, deliver the ordnance. Whereas a ballistic missile, uh, there is a much longer time. Um, uh, from, from a time that the missile is detected, from a time that, that, that it delivers its ordinance. And really, the, it, it's a relative amount when I say much greater time. We're talking about maybe 10 minutes uh, for a, uh, a long-range missile. Uh, but, it's, but 10 minutes can make a, a big difference as far as to how you react to, uh, to that coming in. Uh, so that's why the, the big emphasis these days on hypersonic missiles, um, because we can really uh, bring up the element of surprise uh, for the, when, when, the, when these missiles are coming in make it much harder to defend against. Well, that makes sense. And I have a suspicion there's even more to this story. Well, there is. Um, and then really it, it, the architecture of what you see there for the ballistic missile on the left, uh, really, really uh, is it, it's a traditional missile shape. It's, it, it, it is a round missile. Looks, it's basically the, it's your traditional rocket uh, sort of shape. Uh, that particular one I, uh, is, uh, 
is being fired off off of a mo mobile uh, launcher. Although uh, any, any variety will, will fits the, fits the, uh, the the definition of a ballistic missile. Hypersonic missiles, on the other hand, uh, because they are lower in the atmosphere, um, and instead of traveling more more like it more like a rocket, like we're sending something to space, because uh, actually a lot of ballistic missiles do actually go, go out of the atmosphere and become spacecraft for a short period of time. Uh, hypersonic missiles stay in, in the atmosphere and therefore there's always air around them. Uh, therefore, uh, they're treated more like uh, supersonic planes. Uh, and as you can see with, 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 the, uh, with, with the rendering on the right, uh, that, that, that these are indeed, uh, they do have wings because uh, they are flying in the atmosphere uh, and therefore uh, they're, they tend to be a, a little more plane-like uh, than missile-like even though they're traveling at, at very, 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 very high speeds. Um, and they are doing the same, essentially the same job as a ballistic missile and delivering an ordinance. Okay, that certainly makes sense. Um, what sort of missile applications make use of TRM components typically? All right, so there, 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 there are several systems that where TRM has, has very strong uh, applications for. Uh, the first and, and foremost really is telemetry. Uh, first, a little bit of definition about what telemetry is. Uh, telemetry is the collection of data at a remote location and then transmitting that data back to a receiving uh, location. Uh, for, missiles, for missile systems, what this really amounts to is that it collects data on the missile. Uh, on the missile. There, there are sensors on the missile that, that tell it where the missile currently is, uh, where, it's, where its target bearing is, where its speed, uh, other environmental uh, things around the missile, such as temperature, acceleration, vibration, uh, all these things that, uh, that, that somebody who's, who's steering the missile to where it wants to go needs to know. Uh, conversely, uh, there are commands that are sent, to, to, sent back up to the missile for things like target location, or if, whether or not the, uh, the decision has been made to abort the mission, uh, and those commands then get uplinked to the missile. So there's a lot of data uh, that gets sent back and forth from the missile to the ground stations who are controlling it. Um, and all of these systems are called telemetry. So uh, TRM uh, builds parts for telemetry components. Uh, now go, looking here, as far as what we have here for, for, for common telemetry bands, a little surprising, I think, for most people, the fact that these are not really very exotic high frequency bands. Um, you see that there is, uh, there, there's a band in UHF, uh, there's a band. There's a, a, a band in L band. We have another another uh, frequency band in S band, and then one in C band. Uh, none of these are, are terribly exotic. N none of these also are terribly broad band. Uh, but 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 it, but then again, they're all quite quite important. Uh, TRM has built uh, components for missiles in all of these bands. Um, but uh, I, I think the vast majority of ones that we built have been in S band. Uh, but it is a uh, it is a very common sort of a, uh, uh, a a part actually, as far as what we can actually do build for these parts. So, the reason why uh, why, why we need parts, um, you know, power dividers and that, those sorts sorts such for a missile telemetry, is because the missile's yaw plane, and this is specifically about a a, a ballistic missile. Uh, the 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 orientation of the uh, of, of of the of the missile to the ground station is not always predictable, since the missile is very often rotating in the yaw plane as as it flies. Um, you need to have good coverage in that plane, and uh, but what I mean by the yaw plane is the out to the side of the missile. Uh, a single element on the side of a missile uh, really only looks in the direction where, where where that antenna can can, can see the outside. So in order for it to cover a full 360 degree circle, typically you have to put at least two antennas on, on, on a missile, one on, on either side, so that you can get, get good coverage in, in the entire uh, yaw plane. Depending on the size and the shape of the missile, that may change a little bit, but that's typical. Um, and therefore, if you're, gonna have, if you're gonna be feeding multiple antennas uh, from a single transceiver, you need some sort of a beam former to, in order to be able to accomplish that. Okay, and could you maybe expand a bit about the, the speed networks? Sure, so there, there's several very basic feed networks that work quite effectively uh, for creating these beam formers. Uh, the first one is just a power divider. Uh, a two-way power divider uh, will work back from the transceiver and you could then uh, 
feed two antennas in phase with each other. Uh, and like I said, now for creating a, an antenna pattern in the yaw plane, this is quite effective. Um, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's actually quite popular to do something actually this simple. It's literally just a two-way power divider. Um, the, in, now in the opposite sense, you can also have a power combining network from a single antenna. This is less popular, although it is something that again, uh, a single two-way power divider can accomplish. Okay, and if there are in-phase networks as we see here, I suppose then that there must also be out-of-phase networks, is that right? Yes, that is. Uh, so the, the, the next example here is using a 0-180 hybrid, uh, feeding the delta port of the hybrid in order to be able to generate a 0-180 uh, phase network uh, for the antennas. Uh, for certain applications, uh, this is quite effective and uh, this, is, this is an application that is a little more applicable, for example, to a hypersonic missile than a ballistic missile, because if you have two monopoles and feed them out of phase, you create a dipole effect uh, as, opposed, as opposed to a, uh, which, which, which since the missile is not, is not rotating, you can then get energy farther out to the sides. Um, so it, it, is a, uh, it, it is a common technique to use for something where that is not gonna be spinning in its yaw plane. Uh, a, hyper, a hypersonic missile does not, does not do that. Uh, therefore, this sort of feed network would uh, very likely be a little more applicable to a hypersonic missile than a, than a standard ballistic missile. Okay, and tracking system seems to be a topic that I hear discussed a lot. Uh, can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. Now, the, the, the next big piece is once you get data off and on of the, uh, off, off of the missile, you know, and again, these, these are all location, speed, uh, where its target is, where the missile thinks its target is. Uh, all of these things are all data that has to go back and forth. And again, with a, with, with, with a simple, uh, uh, with, 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 with a simple sort of antenna mounted on, on, on the side of the, uh, on the side of the missile, that data can get back and forth using a simple beam former. Uh, another beam former that is used uh, quite often in, in tracking missile systems is a monopulse comparator. Now I spoke about monopulse comparators uh, back a few, a, a few sessions ago. We're talking about beam formers. Well, well, this is a specific type of beam forming network that allows you to lock onto a signal and very accurately determine in the X and Y plane, how far off of that signal that, that, that you're actually tracking to. Uh, and, uh, and basically it, it is a four uh, hybrid network uh, when, and when connected with, with a four, uh, with, 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 with an antenna feed uh, that is two by two, as you can see on the sort of middle bottom uh, of, of the slide here with the A, B, C, Ds in it, uh, that is the element configuration uh, when you hook that up, you get the antenna pattern shown on the lower left. Uh, now this over here, now the dark blue line shows you the data. And that is, I'm, well, I'm not sure that I get a good signal coming in from the target that I locked on. Uh, the uh, the, the, uh, the kind of purple line that's there uh, really gives you, uh, what you want to do is you want to keep that in the null while you have a, 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 uh, a good positive uh, data coming in. Uh, that, that tracks both delta as and delta L, and as a result, you can very accurately point the missile exactly at the source of where that, of, of, of where that tracking beam is coming from. Uh, therefore, uh, this is a very popular way to go in there, uh, fairly low cost uh, to go in there uh, and, and, and be able to uh, effectively guide the, the, uh, the, the nose of the missile exactly to the, uh, to, to the source that, that, that it is tracking to. Uh, so this is a, this is a uh, again a a, a very uh, popular uh, application for us uh, for sort of a missile tracking system. Okay, and then are there instances possibly when some sort of power combiner might be necessary? Exactly, Paul. You read my mind. That's the second half of the uh, uh, of the uh, of, of the tracking radar. Is that not only do you have to be able to have a beam former that will track. Uh, really, where 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 the signal is, is, is coming from, and also, uh, you know, how what, what the error is from that reflected signal. Really, uh, you know, radars uh, traditionally need high power amplifiers. Uh, so, uh, on a missile system, uh, things that develop high power, uh, you need good reliability. Uh, over the past several years, uh, advancements in GAN technology have really allowed for a very high power density in a very small package, uh, which really has led. Uh, to 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 the uh, to the uh, 
to the ability of a GAN amplifier when used in parallel with other GAN amplifiers, basically building a network of those and, and using a power combiner uh, to be able to generate enough power uh, to be able to effectively uh, replace things like, like traveling wave tubes and, and other sorts of uh, less reliable uh, uh, high power uh, sources uh, for, for, the, uh, for, for the radar itself. So um, TRM, like I said, has, has, has had very good success in building these high power combiners. So I, I see combining networks here. How about, are there times when you'd use a divider combiner network? Yeah, the, uh, the, the divider combiner network, uh, like, like, like it's on the screen right now, Paul, really is uh, what, what I'll say is the uh, kind of the classic uh, application for a GAN, GAN amplifier system. Uh, over here, we, we have the low power in input. We use uh, very often for these sorts of networks, 90 degree uh, hybrids for the power divider and then using a complementary uh, hybrid for the power combiner uh, is very effective, both from a power um, loss standpoint, as well as uh, um, really a very, very uh, compact uh, and, and thermally stable sort of sort of design. Uh, since there's no in internal uh, resistors in the combining network whatsoever, uh, like I said, from, from a thermal standpoint, this also is a very, very effective network. So when you get into in, into these level these high power combining networks, especially with sort of these this GAN is these other um, solid state uh, sorts of power amplifiers, uh, the, these sorts of combining networks are, are very effective, and uh, really I think it's it's been a, uh, a a a good application, a good solution to to, uh, to problems. And TRM has done this with uh, with, with several high power um, customers in the past. Okay, well, thanks for that. Um, I seem to recall from your presentation on designing for space that uh, there are a lot of times when uh, validations and inspections are required to make sure that uh, performance will be reliable when exposed to environmental stress. So uh, if that applied to space applications, I'm thinking that given the places missiles might go, there might be some environmental considerations here as well. Absolutely. You know, uh, missiles uh, have, have the same uh, rough ride, if not rougher, than a, than a lot of spacecraft. So really, there are things that we have to be very, very cognizant of as we're doing the design. Uh, very, sometimes these missiles have very significant shock, shock values and vibration values, um, really just on launch and during flight. Uh, so uh, depending on the, on the technology that we use for the individual components, we'll do things like uh, like an encapsulation of, uh, of individual components to make sure that we don't uh, ha ha have any shock or, or, or other or some mechanical failure issues. Uh, we will go in there and we will add members if we have to, to, to internally to stiffen structures, uh, to reduce transmissibility, to make, make, make sure that um, we can survive the, these higher levels of shock and vibration. Uh, mounting provisions uh, tend, tend to be, also need to be beefed up to make sure that uh, we can we can survive uh, these higher levels of, of shock and vibration. Uh, in addition to that, uh, operational temperature is is uh, is a concern uh, always for these uh, sorts sorts of applications. Um, it does get uh, especially for the higher altitude uh, ballistic missiles. It, it does get cold. Uh, hypersonic missiles it does get hot. So we have to make sure that we have, we we uh, we select the materials that are quite a, that are appropriate for those sorts of applications. Wow, and is the, are there additional environmental issues? You know, like I said, shock and vibration are, are really the the the, the, uh, you know, the 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 two big ones, really. You know that we that we deal with, and uh, and basically what we have to do is we have to uh, go go through there and, and make sure that we really make sure that, that you know that we encapsulate the, the, these devices, um, and that and that we 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 handle all those environmental uh, sort of uh, sort of sort of applications going through there. Okay, so during uh, some of the previous tech talks, you've also shared uh, some of the specific innovations that uh, you and your team have to incorporate into the manufacturing process uh, so that the, the components ultimately meet specifications. Uh, can you tell us a bit about some of these differentiators that relate to missile applications? Sure. So, you know, what, what TRM really, uh, you know, strives itself at being is, you know, we're, we're a solution provider. And, 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 as, and as such, we take uh, components that we build, uh, passive microwave components, power dividers, power combiners, couplers, hybrids, and those sorts of components, 
and we, we package them in such a way that, they, that they're robust to be able to survive the exact environment that, that they're required. If it's a very high uh, shock level, we make sure that mechanically that we, we, uh, we, we, we build the parts so that it will handle those shock levels. Um, if, if, if it has a particular high power required, we make sure that we, that we guard against uh, corona and all the other things and heat and thermal dissipation. Uh, something else that TRM does is, is we're, we're very happy to go through and test and provide the objective evidence uh, that the parts meet those requirements and not just a, uh, a, 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 a push the button and say, believe me that, 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 they, will, that they will actually uh, go ahead and, and survive those environments. Uh, you know, the, the, the proof is in the pudding and the, and, the, and the proof is in the data. So we very much uh, are routinely providing the objective evidence uh, that we do meet those, those, uh, all those environments. Uh, and I think also, uh, which is really uh, important to bring out here is TRM is on several missile programs, uh, building components uh, like the ones I, I, I discussed here today. So we have a very good heritage on, on missile applications. We understand the, we understand the environment and, uh, and we're happy to go ahead and, and, and do some more work there. You know, a couple of times today, you've used the phrase solution provider. Uh, it, are these differentiators really what you would consider the difference between a solution provider versus a component provider? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, uh, the, the, the big difference really is we look at, at what the customer's needs are, uh, and then we, we design a solution for that problem. Uh, as opposed to look, listening to what the customer has to say and say, well, gee, I happen to have this part over here that I think will, will, will work just fine for you. Uh, and, and I think that's the big differentiator. Uh, something else I think also that, you know, that we do differentiate ourselves with by designing parts custom for the, uh, for the exact application is that if, if there's something subtle going on um, that may be difficult to put in a spec, by having the conversation with the, design, with the uh, system engineers, uh, we can understand what the, what those are and make sure that we design to accommodate those things as well. Excellent. As always, Sean, lots of good information. Maybe you'd like to summarize? Sure. So, uh, you know, th there's a wide variety of, uh, of components that are used um, on, on missile systems. Uh, you know, a, a variety of power combiners and power dividers are used for telemetry antenna feeds, uh, as, as well as 0180 hybrids. Uh, monopulse tracking, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, those sorts of, of hybrid net networks, again, are fairly common uh, as building a beam former for the tracking radar uh, that, are, that are on the missile itself. Uh, and also uh, kind of wrapping it up there, uh, high, you know, high power combiners uh, with, with the advent of uh, GAN amplifiers. Uh, we, we need to generate a high power source for those tracking radars and, uh, and TRM is, is, is ready, willing, and able to design high power combiners for those applications. Uh, and wh what I will say is that uh, for each example I just listed, TRM has, has missile heritage for all of those. Excellent. Well, thank you. I think we do have time for at least one question and uh, we do have one here and it's kind of, it's piqued my interest. What is the most frequently used or popular missile application that TRM has had to date? You know, believe it or not, Paul, it's a simple two-way power divider. Uh, I, I will say, you know, we, 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 we support uh, quite a few missile systems. And one of the uh, parts that, is, uh, that, we, that we almost always en end up seeing for virtually every system that we do, um, in addition to other components, is a simple two-way power divider, usually at S-band uh, as part of the telemetry, uh, part of the, uh, in that telemetry band. Um, although the L-band uh, two-way power divider comes in right behind it as far as quantity goes, but most of them, uh, believe it or not, or just a simple uh, two-way S-band, S -band, uh, power divider. Okay, I think that we will, in the sake of time, save the rest of the questions uh, to be responded to via email. We want to thank you all again for coming. You can see that if you have a question that you would like to pose after the session, you're welcome to call the TRM Engineering Hotline, 888-677-6877. And uh, you can see the conclusions that we've drawn here on the screen. Uh, if you are a customer, we would love to hear from you. And there are no, no charges or costs associated with calling the hotline. Uh, if you are a field sales representative, you know that you can call us as well at any time. You can also submit questions through the rep portal or you can work through your camp. And uh, the next Tech Talk is scheduled for Tuesday, July 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, you can register as of today. 
and uh, the title or the topic will be application engineering process. Sean, as always, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Paul.